Okay, guys, look at what they do to the Tim Hortons when I come here at nighttime. Today, they don't close these guys. They're open 24 hours. So when I get here, they close and they start to clean. Even if they don't clean, look what they put on the floor, the mop and the broomstick. Like I told you, every place I walk into, they get the people to clean or to start mopping or whatever. I don't know what the insinuation of this dirt or whatever. So they close the Tim Timmy's. Look, it's closed. It's locked. Look, they're not allowed to do that. It's open 24 hours, this one. Every time I come here, if it's a bit late, they do that to me. And you got people in the parking lot just sitting there waiting for me. Look, there's two over there in their car. There's one over here. This one over here. She's in her car. And now everyone else is going through a drive through it's amazing what they do, these people. They're just ludicrous, you know? Look, look. She's in her van just waiting in there. And those two over there. What are they doing in a plaza that's closed? There's barely anything here, you know what I mean? And the drive through doesn't stop, obviously. It's Sunday night, guys. It's about 12. It's almost 12. Look, as soon as I get here. You know? So what do they do here, these people? What are they doing here? Like this van that just took off right now. Why was it parked there? For what reason? You know? Look. Anyways, they close up the Timmy's. Look, they're cleaning. They're not supposed to. It's open 24 hours, this one. Just to show you how they bend the laws and rules, how corrupt these guys are. They can tap into any establishment and do that. Look at that car parked over there. There's two people in it. I don't know whether they're girls or a couple. You know what I mean? And look, Timmy's. 24 hours, guys, this one. They don't clean. Every time I come here, it could be at midnight, 1, 2, or 3. It doesn't matter. As soon as I get here, they lock it, and they start to clean, or they put the mop out there. I swear to you. I've recorded this before. I got to look for the video, but I've only done one. I should do more to show you that it's repetitive, and it doesn't matter the time. It could be midnight. It could be 1. It could be 2. It could be 3. As long as... I come here, they do that, they close it up. So just to show you, usually there are no people around at this time that come to drink coffee. So when you see the super busyness and the drive through about 10,000 cars coming in one after the other, you'd know that they're stalkers. Because if there were people driving through to get coffee at midnight, there should be people sitting inside, at least one. They're closed, there's no one in there. And nobody's even coming to get in there, to go sit down, nobody. You know what I mean? So, it, it gives you, look, look, she's coming to move now out here and clean. Look. Let me show you, look. You guys know this thing about me, you know. I filmed a lot of videos. Every place that I go to, they go and clean right away. So, they close it up and they start cleaning, look. It's ludicrous, guys. Look, look, look at the cars roaming around the parking lot. Coming from one place and exiting from the other, look. Everyone wants drive through coffee now. Who drinks coffee at midnight? I mean, some people do drink if they go out to a club or, you know, something like that. But usually something like this. I mean, who drinks a coffee at this time? So, uh, what happened? I got robbed tonight uh, by someone in the building. I had smokes in my house. And now I need a cigarette. It's 1230 I'm not gonna find anybody tonight that's gonna smoke, and I always usually do. I've been struggling this whole week, and they paid around with a check of mine. Now I know why, because I do have a couple of bills coming out on Monday the 11th. So that way, the money that I was supposed to get to last me, I won't be getting much of it, because the bill's gonna be paid off now. I was planning to pay it off later, you know, from the big amount of money that I get. It doesn't matter for me. In the end, it all works out, you know? A struggle, a struggle, I don't mind not smoking for a couple of days. But it's just to give you the idea of how this government agency can play around and stick its fingers in certain places where it shouldn't. You know what I mean? They shouldn't be able to do that. So, I don't know, you know, just to, you know, give you an idea of how it... Um, excuse me, you wouldn't happen to have a smoke, would you? So, you know, it's... And that's pretty much the way it works, you know, and I'm trying to pretty much fight it off and, you know, try to, you know, be civil, but it's not going to work, but it's all right. I'm almost at the end of my, uh, oh, this guy's having a smoke with her. Let's hope we can get one. I doubt it. He's going to say no. They're all saying no because they're all government workers anyways in the end. So they're going to do to me what they're not meant to do, what they're not supposed to do, right? So even if I do ask them, I mean, it's... It doesn't really matter in the end because it's it's a sort of a tactical kind of um, thing that they do with, you know, 
um, it's supposed to work against you in every way, you know what I mean? Hey bud, would you happen to have an extra smoke, man? Would you happen to have an extra smoke? Thanks. Oh, a cigarette. So this is what I go through, guys. It's a struggle, you know. They try to torture you in every way possible, you know. And I was supposed to, you know, pretty much be well off this weekend and get everything I need in time and, you know. But that's what happens when they screw around with you. Like I told you, you see, they get the guy to stand outside and say, I got it from someone inside. They tease you even more and more. You got to remember, I'm dealing with the same entity, but with individuals, different kind of people. Because they get orders from that on what to do with you, how to treat you, what to say to you, you know, all those things. Look at that over there, walking back and forth. So, a cigarette is the easiest thing to get. You can get it anytime. Tonight, in this situation, nobody will give it to me now because they're ordered not to. That's the tactic. to try to make me miserable, you know? I went today and, you know, my uncle's house, I got myself a pack of cigarettes. It was stolen from inside my house, guys. Just to show you, you know, I know this sounds really funny, but... I don't know how these guys get into your house, the, 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 the ways they do it and everything. I really don't know, you know, but they do. They manage. They have ways to do that, you know. But what are you going to do? I mean, this is what I'm fighting, and I'm almost there. I'm going to counteract it at the end of the month. Now I know that once I take out this chip, they can't do anything to me. And uh, I'm going to move out of here, go to a place where they can't really do this to me. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that's, that's all I could do in the end, right? Do you smoke, man? No, eh? it's all right. Thanks. So, you know, that's all I got to work with. And I got to keep fighting, keep fighting, keep fighting, keep fighting until I get to where I need to get to, which is not that far away from here. I mean, it's been about six, seven months now of hardcore attacks, you know, and I've learned a lot and I moved forward so much. Look, they're back. Now you hear the cop sirens. So I've moved forward and it took me a while to really get to the bottom of it all, you know. To, to really realize that it's the government doing this to me and I'm microchipped and it wasn't easy, man. You know, because I, I, I could never figure it out because why? I would ask myself why. Why would the government do this to me? I've never done anything. This is the reason why it took me so long to figure out that it was them doing this to me. Because they, ha ha they had no reason to do that. And I just realized that what they do is for guys, when we all go to kindergarten, they watch us. Okay, and certain kids, they have a certain gene, genealogy in them. It's the way we're built. They want to put a cap on you. They don't like you because maybe you have a rebellious nature. Maybe you have a, uh, you know, a sort of, uh, I don't know, a combination of certain uh, qualities in you that are a future threat if you were uh, a rich man or... You know what I mean? Maybe you're bold, maybe you like the truth, maybe you're honest, I don't know. But that's what I figured out. It's the only thing that makes sense. And now when I trace back and I look back at all my years throughout high school and even school back home in Lebanon when I was a kid, these guys have been on my ass all my life. And I've just learned that I was adopted. This family ain't my family, you know, because they never treated me like a family, you know what I mean? And that's that's pretty much, you know, they've attacked me all these years and made me live a life of frigging misery in a way, you know? So, you guys will happen to have a smoke on you. Huh? What is so, anyways, now they're going to get the most amount of people to come in here. Nobody's going to have a smoke, you know, because I'm dying for a cigarette. All I want is one, but that's the way it works. Let me ask this guy. So, you know, that's how it works. Hey, bro, sorry to bother you, man. You don't happen to smoke, eh? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God, you saved me, bro. Thanks. I got robbed, man. What? Yeah, right into my house. What? My apartment. And what did they take? Stupid things. It's people in the building. It's just some of those days, man, when life just wants to give it to you in the face. Well, that's everyday for me. 
<laughs> no, man, but some tall oh, great. You're a good guy, man. Thanks. I appreciate it. It's good bumping into you. Have a good night, man. Thanks. So, you know, you see, you see, you meet a lot of good people like that. Like this guy, just amazing. What do you meet people like that, you know? And look at his job. He's actually stalking me. But most of these people, guys, they don't know. It's compartmentalized, this thing. And most of these people do it without even knowing what they're doing and to who, you know? It's all secretive and compartmentalized. So you really can't see. Like, look how great this guy is. He, saw, he gave me two cigarettes instead of one, right? I mean, it's amazing. How could you beat that? Are you okay? Oh, yeah. Fine, okay. So, you know, I don't know, guys. At least we scored two smokes. Who would be just nice to give me two cigarettes? And they're good ones. No, I'll smoke one on the way. And when I get home, I'll get something. You know, I'll smoke another one. Go to sleep. Tomorrow is Monday, tomorrow night I should be getting my check. I'll pay off everything I need to pay off. It's gonna be a very tough two weeks coming, but it's okay, my check's enough to pay off the internet at least because I need it. I, you know, I use it a lot and my cell phone, I don't even know if I'm gonna pay it off anymore. I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna leave the country anyway, so. I probably won't even bother, you know. So, guys. You gotta learn one thing. No matter how tough the battle is, the human spirit is no joke to play around with. You will be surprised. It will surprise you, trust me, how strong we are. And not just one or two or three people. Us, in general, the human race, we are very strong people. You know, a lot stronger than we think we are. Even the weakest of us. Now when I look back at all these years that I've lived with this sick family that pretended to be mine, I say to myself, how the hell did I survive the slaughter for 21, 22 years hardcore? Because it started hardcore in 96. Now let's see if we can grab the bus if we get lucky. You know? So I say to myself, how did I survive the slaughter, man, that went on for so long? You know, I still can't believe it. And, you know.